Gentlemen, come on. Football. It's time for another O line committee film breakdown here on the O line committee YouTube channel, where the only show in America that I have found, anyways, where a fan gets to sit down representing all fans of football and pull back the curtain with two former NFL offensive linemen and break down what's actually happening. Jeremiah, Alex, how are we doing here? Oh, Fabulous. Cannot be wait better. to break some tape down. Good. <sighs> We have, and by the way, if you're new here, please click the subscribe button and the like button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. Help us spread the word about this offensive line lifestyle platform here. I'm going to pop this up on the screen. As you can see, oh, here we go. this is Joshua Dobbs being thrown into an absolute blazing fire in that game between the Vikings and the Falcons last week, and we're going to break some of it down here. Yeah, we talked a little bit about it on the podcast, but what we want to highlight here is I really want people to pay attention and understand that there's 10 guys on the field that actually know what's going on. <laughs> and then the signal caller and trigger man back there, you might as well be playing in the dirt. Now, you might as well be in the backyard in the sand, drawing plays up, going, okay, if they do, I'm just going to find it and throw it here. And somehow it works. It's incredible. And I can't wait to get into this and show you guys because you got to remember, he doesn't know which way the protection's going. Yep. He doesn't understand who's hot. He doesn't understand, like, is this a conversion route? Is it not a conversion route if they play cover two, cover one? He is literally in the definition of playing backyard football in the yep. National Football League. And it'll be interesting. So, Booney, you you and I and uh, and our guys Judd and Declan on Purple Daily broke down some of these clips. It's a lot of the same plays that you broke down for us on that awesome. podcast. And we get, get Jeremiah's thoughts here, too, on some of the same stuff. So I we're going to start... Go, go ahead, Booney. One of the things that I think people aren't really talking about is how this is going to change the defenses. And I think this is one of the things where when you talk about, when you look up and look at this picture here right now, this looks great. We have seven guys up. Looks like it's going to be crazy. But now these seven guys must know if you jump out of your lane for any reason, this guy could take off and run. So like this whole, like, we'll just pin our ears back and run after him. That's, that's not going to be happening as much anymore. You're going to have to be very controlled. Like I remember our defense is going in and they would say, Hey, the most important thing this, this week is rush integrity. We have to keep our lanes. We have to push and squeeze this pocket perfectly or else he just makes a left turn at Albuquerque and he's gone 80 yards because no yeah. one's paying attention. Like this is where this becomes fun for us as old linemen, because as much as like you'll go out and play maybe one guy who's undisciplined now the team has to be completely disciplined or they're going to mess up and it slows their rush down at the same time and so this is this is early man so jaron hall goes down this he gets like the concussed. first yeah. and this is this is joshua dobbs first series of the game this is i think early second quarter of of the game itself and uh it starts off in adverse fashion we'll just roll this like not exactly Reisner's like, we're going left. No, this is the funny thing is this is going to be one of Jay's biggest pet peeves, and this is why it ends up being a safety is when you look at this, and this is where this becomes the – this game plan was clearly for a rookie. We have seven up. Four are going to drop. Why? Because we're going to mess with this rookie back here. Now it ends up being a veteran. <laughs> Palms up by Cuisenberry, by the way. Right. This guy's doing the skull chant here too. I don't know. Well, go back. 76 has got full palms up like, wait, who's yeah, 15? Right? <laughs> right? Who is that guy back there? Who are you guys? Who are you? Guys. So anyways, the, what we talked about before is when you get up here and you see this look as a quarterback, you're thinking, okay, now I just got to get the ball out. And one of the biggest things that we see defenses do is they start to drop guys out to start vacating and voiding these huge holes that you think are going to be there. But as you set this, uh, see how right here, right away, you're going to see Jay's pet peeve. Not only do you have three guys blocking one, but you got four. It's and you got just... not Christian saw out here on the left tackle. I'm not so worried about the right side because that's my all-pro friend out there who is phenomenal. But 6'6", we got to get out here and help this guy. He is not our regular starter. He's not used to big old Calais Campbell coming down here, man. I'm going to get you. Jeez, they, they beat, they beat the shit out of that nose, though. Oh, they man. They sure that, did, that, that nose, they? That nose guard had no chance. But this Good is... Thing, he's not making a million and a half dollars per game. We just talked game. about how hard it was for 15 and now the first series that starts like this like you've just made him a little jittery and that's why i think that people don't understand is how important he was in this game and how amazing he came after this being the first drive that he was in like you give up a safety to start the game and then all of a sudden you're like all right you know what guys i'm good i figured it out i'm just gonna start running a lot faster next time and i'll be gone and if you go back to i mean look at the wide copy here mac we'll go back to the wide copy like you have to understand too these these routes didn't do him any favors, right? These are deep developing routes. Like there's really not a lot of answers quick underneath, right? Hawks, Hawks, though, chipping on his way out. 
And, you know, I'd like to see Hawk run out into the flat there. Like, his only option is to try and hit this whole shot to Addison, who's on the 15-yard line, right? Or hit this yep. comeback down here to K.J. Osborne. But both of those are anticipation and timing throws where if you don't have anticipation and timing because you've never thrown to those guys before, yeah, it's really hard for you to trust yourself to just launch one in there. So I didn't love the play call here. I know it's third and forever, and you're trying to make something happen. But with the backup quarterback in, really your backup backup quarterback in, like you really just need to kind of bite the bullet on this one, maybe run the football, a screen, a draw, and just give yourself a chance to punt and kind of start over. I didn't love this play call by KOC, and I think he adjusted as the time went on. But even then, if you only rush three, you're not anticipating guys to get home. Yeah. Right. And then no, so that's, so this, that's it, this point. it starts as poorly as you possibly could. But then, uh, okay. Nah, business could picks up. He could have fumbled it there. Could have fumbled for a touchdown, I guess. There you yeah. go. Doesn't so, start the best. We'll Barnburner. go a little further in here into the second quarter. Okay, yeah. Vikings little two two minute drill situation here. Eleven to three. That's an awkward. Score. First of all, think about this two minute drill. Guess who doesn't know the signals? Mm. Fifteen, right? Yeah. So, quarterback. Man. <laughs> everything in 15's mind is being told him through the headset. As I guarantee everyone else is looking around. But again, here you got seven up again, right? Is that six up? Six up. Six. Right. Might six up again. There. They're trying to figure out how they want to rush Dobbs here. Do we want to get after him? Do we want him to create? You know, so again here, they drop. Let it roll. Let it roll. Let it roll. They just drop the left. They drop the this left is side. Where, yeah. And this initially is great by Reisner. See how when you go back, Mackie, we talked about this on Purple Daily. When he sets this protection, this is our 5-0. Five, five oh, he initially, Reisner, looks to his left because somebody probably went to him and was like, hey, listen, dude, that's the backup. Make sure he's good. So it starts great. Dalton checks. He's dropping. And at the same time, you have to respect 53 because this could be a twist. And the minute he starts to go that way, see how Dalton's like, wait a minute, is this a twist? And then he figures it out. It's not. And then he looks back to help Quisenberry, which is very smart because he's the guy that needs the help right now. But he sees there is no help to be had because he's already turned the corner. So I'm going to come back in here, which ends up opening this huge rust lane that he can throw this corner to Addison, which ends up being a shot play. Yeah, and it's a perfectly delivered ball by him. You know, he has the time, and Boone nailed it. You have to have a throwing window in order to do this. The thing that I will say is Dobbs is throwing to him the entire time. Right? Yeah, like you see his little, he's on him. His little purple, Where's three? His Where's little three? purple Viking homer there. Like, watch him. He's like, you know KOC was like, find Addison, throw it to Addison. He's like, got it. There's Addison. I'm throwing it to Addison. I don't know what these safeties, none of these safeties were peering the eyes of the quarterback. Right? Like, he's really, I don't know what he's doing. Because if I'm him, I'm just breaking on Addison right away well, so he's looking so uh if I'm wrong tell me here but so Dobbs is looking left here and this is this route concept goes up this way right yep. so he's essentially isn't he essentially reading this cornerback on this play yes he needs to see if, the if that cornerback sits, sits or bails right right so he sees here he sits with Hawk but this safety I don't know where the safety is going Right? He's, like, staring, at he's staring at Jordan. He's staring at Jordan Addison, right? The whole time. Like this safety needs to be breaking on this ball right away. But he's scared of Addison breaking past him, I guess. And he just comes and puts here and that, that corner bites on Hawk just enough. And this is a great ball. This is why great you brought ball. Josh Dobbs here to make those type of big time throws because he's been doing it all year. Right. He's been a starting quarterback in the NFL since right. basically week one. Right. This isn't the timing of this throw is not form to him but still to drop up and have the trust to make that throw just showed the confidence that he got going throughout the game real quick i'm gonna assume pull this off this dude comes in after three days and wins a game you guys have had him the whole year you've won one game like god how bad how bad are you guys good god it's a a little bit of a different car he was driving in in arizona with that team so what is give us an example of because at the top of the film breakdown here a few minutes ago you guys were saying all right 10 guys know what's happening when a play call comes in and one of them doesn't, Joshua Dobbs, right? So the play, the, the the communication in the headphones in the helmet cuts out at 15 seconds. Yep. What's likely happening between Kevin O'Connell, Joshua Dobbs, and the and the guys in the huddle throughout that entire game? So it's probably going something like this: like the play play ends, they start up. He'll go, "Hey, play 15." He calls the play as soon as he hears clap. He goes, "All right, hey, listen, this is a." This is a slide protection. They're going to slide it to the will. We have this route concept outside. It's a smash with an Ohio backside. Smash for us is out, out, or in, in. And then the Ohio is an, an out with a fake. Like, all these things. Like, just running and through them. Coach, and just hard coach. cut. 
hard Dude, cut. you have to tell him what's going on because in real time, you can't guess. He can't guess and go, I think this is a post and throw the post route when it's not. Like he has. To. Right. That's why when I found out that KOC was telling him, the one thing I did notice was that there was emotions. And so imagine him going, hey, don't forget you still have to motion this guy. Right? So all of a sudden the guy goes in motion. Okay, now listen. He's going to run an out route and then you have a fade behind him. Like all these things. And this kid's just like, got it. Fade out in slant. Here we go. Ready? Boom. Like, dude, he, people can joke, and people, I'm sure on ESPN, are like, oh, yeah, I could do it. And the level of calmness that you would have to have, because you're talking to him the entire time. And remember, he can't talk back. So you're not asking questions, you're telling him things. And you have to be smooth and precise. And you can't be like all up in the microphone talking really fast because then all of a sudden he's going to go crazy. You have to be like, hey, don't forget, you have to motion a kid over here. And then we're going to run a Dino over here. And then we have the corner route. Don't forget, all right? Two, throw this. One, throw this. Boom. Done. Just like that. And then I mean, I just I just picture KOC's mind like when you play Madden and you hit the like view play. Oh. Right, like when you hit like the yeah. you're on offense, you hit the, the ultimate play, Madden, and dude. it's just yeah. like okay, this, this, and like he's just trying to like show Joshua Dobbs that through verbalization, right? Like, hey, your slot receiver has this, and he's just like, look at play. Okay, this is that, this is that. Right. Like Dobbs really doesn't have time to identify the defense, which is why for him, he's just playing backyard football. Like I'm just throwing the open man here. Like I don't know if this is cover one, cover six. If this converts to a single route against this, or if he's supposed to hook. Like I'm just looking for: is there an open man? Is there someone with a color around him? If not, I'm just gonna try and rifle that thing yeah. in there. I feel and like to can, be can, fair, I think two minute would be your best situation in this because you're literally like, hey, just get them lined up. Get throw yeah. up your right hand, throw them where in trips right, and just here show them this signal, and then I can talk you through it. Don't you guys think that? It's hard to define leadership. It's kind of a nebulous thing. I once I there uh, a, a former uh, Marine officer once told me because they have the fourteen leadership uh, traits in the Marine Corps. He said leadership is just facilitating the success of your team, and communication in crisis is a huge facilitator of that. Right? Like mm -hmm. things are crumbling. Oh my God! There's a new guy in here. Everything's moving fast. How clearly and concisely can you communicate to help someone else succeed? Kevin O'Connell, I already thought the world of him as a head coach just based on what they did last year, but to hear these stories coming out now, my God, like how many coaches could could sit there and navigate this thing? This is another play too. So if I'm if I'm correct here, I think free runner comes off the edge here. We'll let this yep. play run. And Joshua Dobbs doesn't know hot routes yet in this offense, so here's what happens. And you can see the hot route is right here with Jordan Addison, that slant right there. But he, like you said. This is one way to do it. <laughs> we're just playing backyard football, and I can't wait to highlight Cam Akers just leveling this guy. But, yeah, we see here, once again, same. This is the defense that you want to throw at a rookie, throw a lot of pressure at him. We don't expect rookies to run out like this, and Boom. we don't Boom. expect people to get leveled like that. Came on street, my goodness. <laughs> God, that, that. You know he woke up the next day like, oh, I can't feel my face. Oh, and you know he was walking to D line meetings. They're like, oh, you know we're gonna watch that. You know we're like, gonna you know, you know, this. you know we're gonna watch that. Someone probably printed out like a poster of him fully lateral to the ground. Like we're gonna put this up in the back. <laughs> the training room is yeah. The training deathly. room. They oh, find yeah. laminators and they find ways to mess with you and they get everybody in on it, dude. I guarantee you, this was a meme the entire day. Like, yeah, look at this dude. But this Bang. this is this is what I was surprised Atlanta didn't do more of, especially in the second half, is just start checking to cover zero type blitzes and seeing if he can make the checks at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Right? That's what if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm going, All right. Oh my gosh, it's a thing of beauty. Look at him just oh he tries to grab and then he him. He points too. at him here, watch this. Ah, Got him. ah you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> But, hey, once again, it's another level of dimension that people haven't seen from the purple people eaters in a while. Like, Because like, he really should be hitting – he should be hitting – This is Powell. Right right he should be hitting oh, Powell, Powell right there. My bad. Right? Powell. Powell, Powell should be getting the football right now. But because – like, and he thought about it, but, again, that's just a trust thing of, like, is this yeah. the right read? Is it not the right read? But thank goodness he can run. Like, and this is an element that Kirk Cousins had zero of, right? Zero of. Now, Kirk put, Kirk rifles it to Powell and puts a hole Correct. through his chest. For sure, right? he like, does. Kirk puts Kirk a hits hole a couple right through It's a whole chest. different game plan, though. That's what I'm, that's the whole point yeah. is. This now opens up a whole new world of, hey, if nothing's there, dude, just go. If they're yeah. going to blitz you like this and they're not going to keep integrity of keeping you in the pocket, take off and run, dude. Especially against cover one and cover zero when no one's out there. This... Love this play. And I tried to get my sixth grade team to run it, but they don't understand the concept of like the O-line going left and Idiots. the running back going right. We call this roll right. 
and it's an awesome play. And we can see this because as you look at 55 and 53, they're held by the action of the offensive line. The minute they see those guys step to the left, what do you think they think? Oh, zone to the left. So now all of a sudden they're like, oh, take off run right there. See that? You're already out leveraged. You're done. You've all committed too far in. And now we can just slip him out the back. We have a nice mobile quarterback again. He can run, take off. And this is the biggest problem is that busted coverage right there. Number one, who should be with, because it's been a while since we've seen someone this open, should have been with Alexander Madison, but instead he peels off. And I think that's number nine. I can't remember who that is, but he sees him. See how he turns right there? Tristan Jackson, Jackson. wide receiver six. Dude. See, right there, busted cover. And it just comes from the whole element of surprise. You thought we were running zone, and we slipped the back out the back end, and we're just going to flip it to him. Like, also, dude, you, oh, another hidden piece of this is if you go back, right, 53 up here should also, when he reads pass, he needs to get his butt out to the flat, too, to cover the, the low flat, right? But he buries himself up in here so fast, he allows himself to be blocked by C.J. Ham, Right, C.J. Ham right mm. here, like, he wants to be dropping back into – into some type of panic drop into a zone like everyone else. But because he's within the line of scrimmage here, Ham can just box him out right there. And it allows now you got to, uh, this guy's completely outflanked on the run here. Look at that. Oh, you know, Calais the other thing too is, down. palms up you know, you, by Dobbs, by the way. Palms up. <laughs> Ding. You, can, you can run bootlegs with, with you know, pocket. Pa- I mean, Kirk Cousins is, is actually good on bootlegs. Yeah, but, but it feels like, and this is Captain Obvious stuff, when you have someone that's faster, like Joshua Dobbs, he gets out on the edge and cuts that angle down, right? So if you have a non-mobile quarterback, he might be he might be back here, and now he's got to lob it up over, you know, it's it's just an easier angle when you have Dobbs sprinting out to the numbers. And this also this starts to off. look like more like scramble drill, right? Let's get our quarterback on the move. You guys find some open windows, settle, sit, make this easy for us. Let them just kind of death by thousand paper cuts. Yeah, and one thing we haven't even talked about, and Boone, you and I have kind of discussed this too, is the fact that the RPO is about to become a huge thing in this offense. Huge. Mm. Huge piece in this offense. Like, they're going to look, and I promise you they're going to study some Philadelphia Eagles tape this week. Guaranteed. And look at how they can use his legs in the RPO game and getting balls on quick slants to Hawk and if Jefferson's back or Addison. And if it's a run read handing it to Madison, but if it's all taken away, just tell Dobbs to pull it and go get six. Talk dirty. Like, that's going to be a big piece. Oh, this should have been a touchdown to Hawkinson. (laughs) <laughs> I'll do it myself. Hey, <laughs> Kirk throws is, a touchdown to Hawkins. Yeah, Kirk, Kirk, go to the wide. Go to the wide. I, oh, I for sure throws a touch here. Like, yeah, we'll again, they're setting a blitz, which it should be obvious to everyone, right? Because where's the safety? Safety's topped, right? The guy's standing on the 10-yard line right there. He's topped over the guy that's going to be blitzing, right? There's four over three out there, so alarm bells are going off in my head if I'm an offensive lineman. Right? Four over three, they motion over. There's still guys over there. This should be a dart right there because he pumps it right in the safety bites see the safety bite right oh, there tud. that should have been a touchdown to tj hawkinson which would have really helped my fantasy team like that should have been <laughs> that should have been a nice easy tutty there to tj hawkinson but again the element of josh dobbs legs and finding ways to create because when you put this blitz in during the week you aren't guessing because i mean hall can run a little bit but you aren't guessing hall's going to do this no. Right. This there's no one accounting for the quarterback, and that just shows great strength and everything. And Go Powell back. just kind of getting in the way over there helps a little bit too. This goes into the whole when you rush him now, you have to be smart. This is great pro, by the way. This is great pro. Nothing about this would make me think that he should have to leave. I get that it's starting to close, but I'm seeing all white jerseys. I'm still seeing all white. I don't see problems anywhere. My left tackle's getting out. But see oh, how abs- that lane this too. This good. See how that lane right there just opened up between Der- or uh Brian O'Neill and Ed Ingram. Oh, on that side. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. See, yeah. see, in this minute he sees green grass, he's it could he could go both ways. He probably sees 58 looping in here, so he knows not to go there. But see how that opens up, and that right there is the end of the play. It also that could have been a become, touchdown to Jackson. Just could have point, been a touchdown to a lot of people. that out as well. Hawkinson, Jackson, both could have scored passing touchdowns here. But Dobbs, with the athleticism, comes up. And go back. I want, when, this is a teach tape, too. I want to show something on the protection side of this real quick as well. So you, I know you guys hear us talk a lot about like key protections and sort type protections here. Go to the wide Mackie. It's going to be easier to teach. Like so, when we talk about a sort protection or, or a key protection, right? We're talking about a three for four, right? And what we mean by that is the center, the left guard, and the left tackle. Their initial read are the two down linemen, so seventy five in the defensive end, 
to this linebacker, right? This triangle. We call it Straight the triangle. Over, yeah, yeah. Right? That's our initial triangle of our three men that are initial threats. But so when you're, say, those three guys are sorting these three guys are sorting those three guys. Those three, three guys. Plus. But when I say three for four, we also have the fourth guy if the third guy bails. Correct. Right. Okay. And so the our first read is this linebacker, and the read is if he sits, bounces, or bails. This then guy. our eyes have to go out. Yep. If he triggers downhill. We're locked on three for three. Now the back picks up the fourth element, right? But as you can see here, when you let it play out, Reisner, he has eyes to that linebacker. He sits, right? He sits. He's not downhill. He's not a threat. So Reisner hits out, 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 mm-hmm. right? Reisner gets out here, which then allows Q to hear the call of, hey, out, 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 and allows him to push out. So now we don't have to get the back involved in protection with the fourth element, because it's truly only three, and now he can come out and be a safety valve or a blanket, uh, a check down, right? The whole point of this protection is to find ways to not have the back get into a protection. Interesting. That's Always send the big boys That's to the party. Stuff, dude. That is uh, just a little teach time. Right little there. teach time. That, dude. Little love teach that. time. We'll run a couple more here for you guys. Joshua Dobbs. Uh, this is the same play. Mm. <clears throat> we'll get out here. Whoop. This is such a big Bam. Throw. That's oh, such a big bullets. boy throw, dude. Third dude. down, right? Yeah, this that, was I this believe a this big was a third, third down. down. This is yeah. a big third down at the end of the game. All right. So again, they got the protection all sorted out up front here. They're gonna be sliding to the right. All right. They might have just called a hole call here with Bradbury. He slides over to the left. So it's one on ones, Ed Ingram one on one, Brian O'Neill one on one, Q one on one. Like great those pocket. are great one-on-one That's reps sexy. by all those guys. He has plenty of space to step up in the pocket. Mm. Like Ed Ingram does a great job, and this is the whole shot, right? You hear the people talk about the whole shot mm. all the time, and he puts it above the corner's head and beats the safety with the ball, and just drops an absolute dot right there to Addison. Mm. I love it. Again, though, this goes back to you traded for a guy that's been a starting quarterback in the NFL. He's made these throws week in and week out, which is why this was such a great move to bring a starter-ready player into an offense that needed it. Because you could have just signed 37-year-old Colt McCoy, right. who knows the system really well, yeah. right? But he hasn't played, and he's barely I agree with Jay. barely started games. Savvy move it's by Quasey. Savvy move, Brody. Yep. For nothing. Oh, here we go. Get out of trouble. Oh, this is, you this don't is know fourth how to tackle and seven. anybody. Fourth and seven. Game on the line. Just running for your life i was really worried he wasn't gonna get out of bounds right there too watching the game like as i was watching the game i was like get out of bounds <laughs> and then we'll hit you with this we got one uh one or two more here i think it's one more for oh, two more all right here we see nice, little even nice front. wide wide front wide front on the left here four down this is the game winner yeah four down here dude no blitzing a- right you've gotten nervous you blitzed Dobbs a few times he's burned you on it so now you're just sending four Hey, making it easy on the O-line, aren't you? There Eddie you go. Ingram, locking him guys in that up. Pocket, Brian O'Neill. Stay in there. Look at that dart. No, almost knocks him. The fuck? Oh, God, he knocked him off. <laughs> God. He threw that with so much zip, dude. You could hear it on the TV copy. I was like, <laughs> Watch what? Reisner. Reisner here, that's where we talk about the worst position in football for an O-lineman. Yeah, Watch him turn around, and he's looking Joshua Dobbs in the eyes. That's not what you want, right? Even if he doesn't have any eyebrows. Well, right? You're like, oh, <laughs> where are your eyebrows? Right? Make like, a great throw. Him. And so he ducks. Watch, he even ducks. Huh? Like, he's like, I don't want <laughs> <laughs> right? okay. But again, it's, it's a great job by him of knowing where my help is. How do I get to my help? Sliding through. Ed Ingram had a great game this week. He did a lot of one-on-ones because they were sliding to the backup left tackle. Yep. Got to give props to him for how he grows. O'Neal, they were on islands all day long. Played great. Play on the game, game on the line. You're sliding away. It's Calais Campbell. Just boom. Sits him down with great leverage, great hands. He delivers an absolute. You know what? So it's great pocket movement hey, by Dobbs, we, too, man. Like, we got to give a shout-out to uh, the coach, Coach Cooper. Just yes. coming in, making these dudes – this is a this this whole game plan. We haven't seen a bad. I mean, maybe a little bit, but you have to remember that's not Derisaw out there. So to come in and play in a road game with a backup backup quarterback and to be able to keep the pocket that clean and be like, hey man, we're gonna do whatever we can. Huge shout out to the O line. They're playing they're playing lights out. They gotta get that run game going though, dude. That's what's driving me nuts. Yeah. They can like, get the run game going. Watch out, dude. You get that run game Sunny. going. Go pluck you, Leonard. You start Fernet. talking about different things, be, and it's not about the talent level as much as it's hard to cover fifty three and a third yards by a hundred yards. It's yeah. hard to cover that much space, and if. It's, hey, they're running vert, and at the same time, they're running an RPO, and at the same time, he could pull it and run. 10,000 things could happen, and everyone starts to play really, really tight. 
And that's when Noah Line just goes, mm, feast or famine, boys. Feast or famine. Let's go get it. Let's eat everything. Eat it all. That was a fun breakdown, man. That was fun. If you guys enjoyed that, if you guys... So wait, uh, they're not going to win this week? Okay, cool. Got it. You, you, hey, you guys said it, not me. <laughs> I, go I, listen to the podcast. We did our picks. Go. Mackie and I took the Saints this can week. Can I get the Gallad horn? Can I get the Gallad horn? <laughs> sure, okay. you can have it. So, wait, former, hold on. Say that again. What What did you call that? I don't know. A horn. Hold, no, no. <laughs> say that again. What did you call that? Gallad horn. Gallad horn? The gallad? There's no D in there, dumb A gallard dumb. horn? D for dumb. Duh. Duh. <laughs> what is a gallad? That's what I said. A gallad horn. Horn. It's not a gallon horn. What it's is a, it? It's a gallon horn. That's a gallon know. horn. Okay. A gallon horn. Call it a gallon, gallon horn when you walk around. Where's not that gallon, gallon horn? Where <laughs> is it? <laughs> not going to work. Where's that gallon? Not going to, not going to. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this film breakdown, click the like button and the subscribe oh. button on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. We appreciate you guys.